Hey, Brian, Mark Loretti calling. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? All right, I just wanted to call and get some comments from you about the uh, the grand list that I looked at. It's obviously, you had uh, more growth and just wanted to see your reaction to seeing those numbers, especially with the pandemic going on. It, that's gotta be pretty positive. Well, I think it's pretty telling the, the kind of numbers that came in this year during the pandemic speaks a little bit about to the fact that people want to be in a place like Shelton. Uh, I will note that this is our 30th consecutive year of grandless growth. So there's a real consistency about what goes on in Shelton that I think businesses take a lot of comfort in and seniors that live in their homes um, are able to stay in their homes. They're not being taxed out like they are in other places. And so that's always been a goal of mine is to make Shelton affordable. And, uh, you know, some people complain that we don't spend enough money in, in certain areas. You know, I, I can tell you that we have the money to spend and we spend it wisely. And we've shown growth in every area of city government, um, particularly in education. You know, when you know education gets thrown under the bus at budget time, but after that, we're a pretty good system. And, you know, that's that quality of life issue that, that people like and want, and that's why people are coming to Shelton. stronger growth coming with all the development going on, especially in the downtown area. Um, talk a little bit about, I mean, you've been doing it for 30 years, but talk a little bit about what you've done to make businesses want to continue, and not, not only businesses, uh, but other developers want to keep coming to Shelton and, and putting in their housing or putting in, you know, their businesses. Well, I'm glad you mentioned downtown because that was a goal for me back in 1992 when I first ran uh, to affect the change in downtown. And you're actually seeing the bricks and mortar change. You're seeing the changes that, that downtown produces in the amount of taxes that the city receives. They've been a big contributor this year to that uh, point and a half percent increase in our grand list. Grand list. Uh, a lot of it's got to do with the, the apartments that have gone in and now the, the commercial component, you, generally on the, on the street level, that, uh, that people uh, you know, can shop at or they can go to d d a variety of different restaurants. And so you know, that's, that's actually happening. People can see that. And when people see things like that, it gets the attention of other would-be investors. And that's precisely what's happening downtown. It's been happening up on Bridgeport Avenue for any number of years. You know, last Wednesday at Planning and Zoning, Gary Line Plastic, which is a manufacturer, got an approval for for um, uh, 710 Bridgeport Avenue, which is where Perkin Elmer is. They're gonna occupy 200,000 square feet of that space. They're gonna employ 350 people. Now granted, some of those jobs are coming with them from the Bronx, but the employer yeah. said that they were probably only gonna take probably 30 to 40 people with them. That means that there's gonna be around 300 job opportunities for people in Shelton and in the surrounding area. And you know, that's what, what makes Shelton attractive. You know, people often talk about diversity in terms of people. I talk about diversity in terms of our development. And you know, manufacturing is um, not a thing of the past. You know, once upon a time in Connecticut, we made everything in the world here uh, yep. through manufacturing. And we know that that's all changed, yep. but we're starting to see this high tech manufacturing come back um, into our area and into Connecticut in general. And when it comes to the state, it's generally gonna land here in Shelton. And so I think that that's, that's about as positive as it gets. And by the way, those numbers aren't even reflected in this year's grand list growth. So, yeah. but, but it, it's a trend that's been occurring, you know, when you have a good quality of life and you're consistently affordable, you know, I think that's the thing that, the, that employers and businesses look for, that, that Shelton is predictable that they're not gonna get a spike in their taxes and they're able to uh, adjust their, their cost of uh, doing business in Shelton in the state of Connecticut when they know that they have consistency. And by the way, you know, if you don't raise taxes, who does it affect? How about everybody? Yep. How about everybody that lives here? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, I know you raised, you had to raise taxes what, it was uh, two years ago. And it was so very slight. But how how many years had you have you gone without 
having any kind of real significant tax increase on the population. You know, I think that if you look at our grand list since 1992, I want to say that that 22 or 23 times we have either left the mill rate alone or lowered it. Now, if, if you don't think that that's being consistent, then boy, I, I don't know what is because nobody else is doing that. Yeah. And, and another point that I would make is that every time we don't raise taxes, guess what everybody around us does? So that just, that, that just widens the gap every year. It gets, yep. it gets wider and wider. And that's what makes us significantly more affordable. That's one of the reasons why when a, a manufacturer wants to move in from, from the Bronx in New York, that yeah. we don't have to give them tax incentives because the incentive is already built in. It's what they were paying in New York versus to what they will pay in Shelton. It's a huge savings for them. For, for that particular company, did they reach, did you, you know, how did that happen? Did they reach out to your office or, you know, how, how does a company like that find Shelton and then what do you have to do to, you know, make that final, you know, make them finally say, yeah, this is where I want to come. Well, when they first contacted me about six months ago, uh, they were looking for some financial incentives. That's the first question that every business asks you when they call. What type of incentives do you offer? Naturally, because everybody in every state around us offers financial incentives. I've always believed okay. that if you have to pay someone to be here, you're doing something wrong. And I've always and I've often disagreed with, with the state of Connecticut when they just give money away to keep a company here. I think that if they follow the Shelton model, we'll all be uh, that much better off. And I know that the taxpayer will certainly appreciate that. Yeah. It's the predictability factor that, that gives us that, that significant advantage. I know you. I know I've asked you this the last time when I first started. It was an election year, but and then you tell me your, you know, any any word or anything you say about uh, running for re-election. Uh, I'm assuming you probably are, but I, I know you say you're running all the time. But any comment on that at this point, as far as what your future holds? Well, look, and I, I've always said that I consider the fact that I'm running unless I say I'm not, and so I think it's a fair bet that I'll be running again. Now that may disappoint some people on Facebook. But okay, <laughs> those people on Facebook can't produce the results that I produce each and every day, each and every year in terms of making Shelton an affordable, safe, high quality life community. There's a reason why we're recognized by so many different national entities and, and agencies and, and state agencies like, like the Yankee Institute, um, you know, because they recognize what's happening here in Shelton. We've actually become an employment hub. On any given day, 25,000 people will commute here to work. You know, that's a big number. Not other communities can say that. Yeah. And that's great about uh, the plastics. I mean, with the fact that they're going to be bringing in so many people, that they're going to be hiring so many people from right in the community was, was very significant when I heard that at the meeting. That was great. Yeah. You know, um, in addition to them, uh, we're talking to two other companies that are bigger than they are about settling here in Shelton. And the place that we're, we're talking about putting, locating them on is, is the Moss property, the property that we bought back in, in 1996 from the FDIC and land bank for all these years. So, you know, we've got a real significant opportunity to bring in a couple of corporate heavyweights this year. So this, this pandemic has produced a lot of results for us. And I think that the people will be very surprised in the next two, three, maybe four months when they see who these companies are. Any hints now, or should we? Uh, I guess it's still in the negotiation stage. Yeah, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, a lot of these companies want to remain autonomous. They don't want to um, um, divulge who they are because you know, you know, they might be talking to other communities, other states. Oh yeah. You know, they want to keep stability with their workforce. They don't want their employees getting getting nervous about you know their future and where the company might be. Um, one other question, and this is about, and, and I'm, I'm only asking you honestly because um, I know uh, Mr. Nappy has been um, dealing with, you know, dealing with COVID and de dealing with being sick. So I, I was not sure of his status really with the buses. I was wondering if you had any comment about, there's been a lot of talk about the buses not going to be ready this week because of COVID. You know, listen, you can't 
determine where COVID is going to go next, you know, and I guess it's hitting, you know, people that working with the bus company. Um, any, any idea on your part, how that status is with the bus company right now, as far as its uh, staff and will they be able to, to run a full complement of buses the rest of the week? Well, I think that, that we're going to be prepared to roll the buses out tomorrow and then again on Friday. Look, at COVID is an issue for everybody across the country. It's not just here in Shelton. Oh, yeah. It, you know, and oh, it, affects, yeah. it affects multiple businesses and, you know, it, and it runs in, runs in phases. And right now we're, we're in a phase right now that I, I think we're going to be okay. The thing that I've tried to impress upon the Board of Education over the years is that with the, with the decrease in enrollment and the fact that most parents are driving their kids to school, we should be consolidating these routes. If we do that, yeah. we'll have more than enough drivers to be able to accommodate the uh, t picking kids up. I mean, I mean yeah. you, you just look in front of any elementary school in the city uh, w when school starts. You know, the lines of cars are, yeah. are out onto the street. Yeah, so, so and if, the buses are essentially empty now. Yeah, so if, if parents don't want to put their kids on the bus, and I certainly understand that, you know, there's an opportunity for us to consolidate routing and ensure that we do have enough bus drivers. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Any, anything else? Uh, any, any other um, news, like COVID news on your part? Anything that the city is doing or planning on doing that you just want to get out to the citizens concerning COVID or any kind of uh, vaccines or anything like that? You know, nothing has been conveyed to me from the state in terms of uh, who will be receiving the vaccine or they've been in the lead on that and, and, and okay. So, you know, everything is pretty much status quo from what we talked about last week. Okay. All right. All right. Great. No, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Have a good have a good day. Yeah. You too.